Think about a power plant that serves the whole city and imagine that the weather gets extremely hot, beyond the normal average. As a consequence, everyone simultaneously turns on his or her air conditioner, thus creating a sudden increase in electricity demand. If the power plant's energy is not enough to handle that peak demand, then the utility company would think about constructing an additional plant, or would need to find additional generation sources, including non-renewable energy sources. Demand response is a technology that aims to overcome these types of conflicts by reducing energy demand, especially during peak times. The utility company sends an alert, which is called a DR event, or a curtailment event, to the commercial customers who agree to change their usage patterns at peak demands. In turn, the commercial consumers reduce their demand with the alert. Consumers are rewarded for their participation in the demand response programs, and the construction of additional power plants is avoided. In some cities, utility companies may charge extra during peak times in order to reduce energy demand. On top of this, demand response programs are helpful in balancing the supply of renewable energy sources. For example, a solar energy source will not be able to generate power at night, which will therefore lower the power availability. A demand response program can offset this effect. Projects that participate in demand response programs will earn this credit. However, if there isn't any available demand response program in the project's location, the credit can still be earned by providing infrastructure for future demand response programs. Here is the credit roadmap. The credit contains two cases, and projects can choose either one of them. Case 1, Demand Response Program Available, and Case 2, Demand Response Program Not Available. Let's take a closer look at the credit. Credit Intent, to increase participation in demand response technologies and programs, which enable efficient energy generation and distribution systems, increase grid reliability, and thereby reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Credit requirements. The intent of this credit is to encourage project teams to design the building and equipment to allow participation in demand response programs through load shedding or load shifting. On-site electricity generation will not meet the intent of this credit. Load shedding is the intentional action by the power utility to reduce the load in the power system in order to prevent a total failure of the system. Load shifting is storing the energy generated during off-peak hours to use it during peak demand hours. Usually, battery systems are used to store the energy during load shifting. Projects should pursue one of the cases in accordance with the demand response program availability in the project's location. Let's take a look at the two cases under this credit. Case 1. Demand Response Program Available if a demand response program is available in the project's location, project teams should participate in a demand response program and complete the following activities. 1. Design a real-time, fully automated DR system based on external initiation by a DR program provider. Semi-automated DR, in which the DR coordinator initiates the control strategy programmed in the building automation system and the decision to participate is made by a person, may also be utilized in practice. However, a manual demand response system will not satisfy the credit, which basically requires the building operator and occupants to manually turn off their end-use systems. 2. With the intention of multi-year renewal, projects should enroll in a minimum one-year DR program for at least 10% of the estimated peak electricity demand. In order to determine which individual end uses represent 10% or more of the building's total annual energy, project teams can use their energy analysis calculated under Option 1 of the Minimum Energy Performance Prerequisite. If project teams did not pursue option 1 of that prerequisite and instead followed option 2 or 3, they can use the space peak load calculations to estimate the overall building peak demand. This is also important to know for the exam purposes. 3. Develop a plan for meeting the DR commitment during the DR event. 
The plan should clearly demonstrate the identified demand reduction strategies, responsible parties, and anticipated reduction for each measure. And 4. Include the DR processes in the commissioning authority's scope of work, including participation in at least one full test of the DR plan. Now, let's take a look at Case 2, Demand Response Program Not Available. If a demand response program is not available in the project's location, projects should provide infrastructure for future demand response programs or dynamic real-time pricing programs and complete the following activities. 1. Install interval recording meters with communications and ability for the building automation system to accept an external price or control signal. 2. Develop a comprehensive plan for shedding at least 10% of estimated peak electricity demand, again, in order to determine which individual end uses represent 10% or more of the building's total annual energy. Project teams can use their energy analysis calculated in Option 1 of the Minimum Energy Performance Prerequisite. If projects did not pursue Option 1 of the mentioned prerequisite and instead followed Option 2 or 3, projects can use space peak load calculations to estimate overall building peak demand. 3. Include the commissioning authority in the demand response processes including participation in at least one full demand response testing. And 4. Contact the local utility to discuss participation in future demand response programs. Now let's take a look at the required documentation for this credit. For both Case 1 and Case 2, project teams need to document a proof of ability to shed 10% of peak demand with the proof showing that the DR system is capable of receiving and acting on an external signal. The teams also need to document an action plan that meets the reduction requirements during the demand response event and an inclusion of demand response in the Commissioning Authority Systems Testing Plan. If a demand response program is available in the project's location, which is Case 1, projects need to additionally document a declaration of enrollment in the demand response program. Before finishing up this credit, it is also important to note that this credit does not qualify for exemplary performance. Lastly, let's take a look at the key things to remember for this credit. 1. Projects need to design the building and equipment to allow participation in demand response programs through load shedding or shifting. Two. Projects should install a fully automated DR system based on external initiation by a DR program provider. A semi-automated DR system may also be utilized in practice. However, a manual demand response system will not satisfy the credit. 3. Projects pursuing this credit should also include the commissioning authority in the DR processes, including participation in at least one full DR testing. And 4. In order to determine which individual end uses represent 10% or more of the building's total annual energy, projects can use their energy analysis calculated in Option 1 of the Minimum Energy Performance Prerequisite. If projects did not pursue Option 1 of that prerequisite and instead followed Option 2 or 3, projects can use space peak load calculations to estimate overall building peak demand. Note that this time, CBEX is not used to estimate a building's energy demand.